Hey guys, it's Christy with Stone Family Farmstead. So today we're going to talk about making uh, mountain pour soap. But first, um, I want to share with you that I am not an expert. This is not something I normally do, but I do make um, hot process soap and have done that for years. And so uh, a melt and pour soap is a lot easier. And so I feel like, you know, I could probably offer you something that would help you if you are not wanting to uh, make lye soap. Also, I want to say excuse me for my laundry that's going, but you know, we live here, so. So before we get started with making the soap, let's talk a little bit about why you would want to make a melt and pour soap. Um, you know, some people just don't feel safe using lye, and especially if you haven't done it regularly, it is kind of um, nerve-wracking at first. So if you don't want to work with lye, mountain pour soap is a good idea for you. Um, if it's not as time-consuming a process to make mountain pour soap, it's probably maybe 15 minutes, you know, maybe a half an hour if you're brand new and, um, <clears throat> and you're following directions or something. Um, you don't need as much equipment or supplies. Um, you wouldn't need lye and you wouldn't need, you know, all the separate oils and milks and whatever, you know, it is that you uh, would use just to make a base soap. Um, there would be no uh, developing of recipes as far as the science goes. With a melt and pour, you definitely will have a recipe, but it's just, you're just not going to have to worry about much of the science. There's a little bit involved, but not too much. Um, it's very safe if you have kids or inquisitive animals around, so you don't have to worry about them getting into the lye or knocking it over or whatever while it's cooling or anything like that. And this soap does not need to cure. So what are the things that you would need for um, to make melt and pour soap? I'll just show you real quick and then we'll talk about uh, all the different things. I'll just give you a really brief overview. So you would need your um, your melt and pour soap and this one is a glycerin and so um, it's a clear and so uh, you would use it just like you would use any other melt and pour soap but there are a lot of melt and pour soaps that are like goat milk or mango butter, cocoa butter, shea butter, um, you know, honey, just different ones. And those would be more like a milky color. And so you're gonna to wanna to think about that while you're, um, while you're thinking about, what co about colors and stuff like that. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So um, the next thing that you would want is a colorant. And you would wanna think about whether you wanna go natural or you don't care about that. And we'll talk about those in a bit. Fragrances, same thing, natural or you don't care about that. Um, you need a soap mold and so this is the one I'm going to be using today it's silicone it's super cool I love these kind because they're easy to peel off of the off of the soap bar but there's also other kinds that um, are like shapes or they're bigger than this I have a, a larger one that holds a two pound block of soap so um, you know you would need your soap mold um, I believe that you probably could use you know like a I don't think we use Tupperware anymore, but like a, a Rubbermaid um, container or something that's in your cupboard or whatever. But uh, these silicone molds are, because they're so pliable, they're really easy to get the soap out of. Much easier than say like a Tupperware container or a, a Rubbermaid container. Also, um, there are some other optional supplies that I'll go over a little bit later. So like I said, the soap bases, you have a lot of choices. This is just a glycerin one. I've never used anything but glycerin. So there's goat's milk, shea butter, honey, mango butter, cocoa butter, and it just really depends on what kind of properties you want your soap to have. So you'll need to do a little bit of research with that. But then, you know, once you figure that out, then you can pick your mountain pour soap. So when we want to talk about how to color your mountain pour soap, it just depends on whether you want to go natural or not. And so if you want to go natural, um, you can use clays and they have like really muted earthy colors. And also um, the clays will add, you know, another, uh, another healthy property to the soap for your skin. And then there's also um, color blocks that are um, 
like little, you know, I, I don't know, I guess they're the size of ice cubes. I've never used them before, but they seem like a, just a small, you know, um, cube that you cut some off and a little bit goes a long way. Or there's uh, pigment powders or micas. And micas are used in cosmetics. And uh, like the color blocks, they both come in like matte and shimmer colors. And there's a huge array of different colors, which is different than the clay. There's not a really big array of colors. Um, pigments have like super vibrant colors, but they're not as easy to work with. So when you have a powder like the clay, the way you would do that would be to mix a teeny little bit of water in with your clay and then, you know, mix it into the soap. Um, I don't have exact measurements, but with the pigments and the micas, because they're powders, you would also do the same thing um, with uh, rubbing alcohol. So um, because we're not doing that, I'm not going to cover that in this video, but just know that, you know, those are your choices. So for ways to give fragrance to your soap, you can go natural with essential oils like I did. Um, when I made this, and this is the soap that we're going to make today, it smells really good. It's orange spice, and um, I used essential oil for this one, and um, I got the information that I'll share with you in the show notes um, for how much to use, because essential oils don't always work um, really well. I've made a lot of soap with essential oils, and then it comes out not smelling like anything so you want to get the right amount um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later and like I said I will share that link with you in the show notes um, so depending upon the, the essential oil you use you're gonna to have to use more or less or whatever and you'll see that in my recipe um, fragrance oils these have more staying power they're made specifically for um, making soap and um, but they're not considered natural the way that essential oils are so also some have recommended that you can use like your perfume that you have at home or whatever but because most of those are alcohol based um you know it could cause seizing and uh, thickening that just means thickening like uh to where it's hard to work with and so um i would steer clear of that personally but i guess you could try it if you really wanted to so, um, I also want to point out that if you want written instructions for this, you can head over to um, my blog, stonefamilyfarmstead.com, and um, I believe that the blog post is called DIY Soap Without Lie. I think it's something like that. Anyway, I will have that link in the show notes as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So... You're going to need a uh, couple pounds of glycerin soap. I'm actually only making one pound. And you can see on the soap that it's scored. So I'm just cutting along those score lines and I think those chunks are probably about an inch by an inch squared or whatever. So um, you don't have to buy any that's scored. You can, it doesn't matter. It comes in lots of different uh, different uh, types. So the other things that you're going to need is besides your mountain pour soap base is a colorant of your choice, a fragrance of your choice, a large microwavable measuring cup like the one you see back there, um, something to stir your mixture and I like to use that little red and white silicone spatula. You'll need a thermometer. It can be digital or it could be a candy thermometer, just whatever's easiest for you. I've even seen somebody use like a forehead thermometer um, for it. And actually I have one coming, not just for soap making, but I, it's gonna be really nice to not have to stick something into the, into the mixture. Um, you'll also uh, do really well if you get a digital scale. They don't have to be expensive. I think they're under 10 bucks. Um, you'll need a soap mold, and I believe I showed you that before. Silicone works best, but the other household options can be used um, if you want to just get creative. And then you want something to cut your finished soap into bars. I'm putting the melt and pour soap into the microwave for the first minute, and I will be 
adding annatto seed powder to the mixture soon. Okay, so here's where I took it out after the first minute. And if you stir it around after the first minute, you could see it melting. It's continuing to melt as I'm stirring and getting looser and looser, but it's still gonna need a little bit more time in the microwave. But I'll just stir it a little bit here and there, and then I'll put it back in for 30 seconds. So this is what it looks like after it's been in for 30 more seconds, and it looks like there's a couple of ice cubes in there. Um, and I'm just gonna stir it around a little bit more just to see if I can get it to melt on its own. I really don't want my mixture to be too hot, but I do need it to be completely melted. So I'll put it back in for another 30 seconds. So this is what it looks like once it's been melted. It's been in a total of two minutes in the microwave, and that's pretty much just about right. You don't wanna overheat it, which is the reason why we put it in in intervals of 30 seconds um, as we need to. Next, we're going to add one teaspoon of kale and clay. And the reason why I have this little container out is because I want to mix the one teaspoon of clay with um, a few drops of water. And so you'll be able to see what that looks like when uh, once I've mixed it and how well that mixes in. That way you're not mixing a um, powder into the soap. So I only put like about one teaspoon of water in there. Oh, and so um, it kind of went all over, didn't it? I didn't realize that as I was shooting, but at any rate, you only put just a tiny bit of water in there and um, using your spatula, just go ahead and pull that all into your mixture. And the reason why I added the kale and clay is not really because of the properties, but I actually kind of wanted my uh, soap not to look see-through. I kind of wanted it to be more white. And uh, I only just didn't know that when I first bought the uh, glycerin soap. I kind of wish I would have had um, one of the more milky soaps, but that's the reason why I added the kale and clay. But there are good properties to it for the skin, and so why not? The next thing we'll add is our colorant. I'm using Anato Seed Powder. And... I'm using a half teaspoon, and that's for a pound. And I'm just putting the powder right in there. And I'm doing that for a reason. Um, normally, if you wanted like a smooth color, you would um, maybe mix it with water or in the case of micas and, um, and, the, and other uh, powdery colorants, you would mix it with uh, rubbing alcohol, but I kind of want a few speckles in my soap. And so I'm kind of hoping that that's how it turns out. So already it's a pretty, it's a pretty orange color and um, the aroma will be orange spice. So um, I think that's going to go really, really good with this color. And so I'm just kind of um, smashing the big pieces up along the side. And um, there's a couple of bigger clumps still left, but like I said, that's okay. It's kind of how I wanted it to look. At this point, it's time to measure the temperature. And I'm using a digital thermometer, one from my kitchen. I don't really recommend that, but um, it's the only one that I had right now that I uh, thought was um, accurate. So I'm using it, and because it's not lye soap, I'm not too worried about it. So, um, or since I'm not using lye, I'm looking for a temperature between 120 and 130. And um, this one looks a little too high. So we're gonna wait a little bit longer for it to cool off. Okay, we're gonna measure it again. It's been sitting for probably about 10 minutes. 
and we're looking for 120 degrees, but I think it's better if it's between 120 and 130. And the reason for that is because um, the essential oil that I'm using could cause it to seize up a little bit. And um, it's not always the end of the world when that happens, but you kind of don't really want that to happen. So it looks like it's kind of slowing in temperature. And so it might be a little too cool, but I believe it will probably get to 120. And once it does, um, we can go ahead and mix the essential oils in. Ta-da! So now we're gonna weigh the essential oils. And um, this is my digital scale. It's an expensive one because I use it for a lot of things, but like I said before, you don't need an expensive one. You can get one for less than $10 on Amazon. And just make sure that it measures fractions of, of ounces and then you should be good. So when you measure out your essential oils, you're going to want to use a glass container to do that because essential oils can have um, reactions with um, other types of bowls like you know plastic or aluminum or metal or whatever. I just like to use glass and what you're going to want to do is tear it out and what that means is you know, you're going to zero it out with the jar or the um, bowl on it. And I'm obviously pushing the wrong button. So, <laughs> but you see on the left, yeah, I'm going to zero it out. Okay. So now I'm going to mix the essential oils and um, what I need to do is to add I'm adding orange oil. And this is a, um, a cheaper brand. It's not my favorite. I wouldn't really use it, you know, for um, therapeutic reasons, but it smells really super good and it's really inexpensive. And I think it'll be really good for, to use for soap. Um, also really economical. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and pour it and I don't know, for some reason it makes, it's really hard to pour out of these bottles. I don't know why, but um, just be careful when you're pouring yours. And I'm gonna need 0.8 of a an ounce for this. And um, I believe I mentioned before that there's actually a chart that I used that uh, someone who went before me and uh, is more experienced than me wrote up and I will put that in the show notes. Um, so you can see uh, why I chose what I chose. Well, it's, I mean, I chose it because somebody else told me that this was the right amount. So I'm just going to go with her and then, um, you know, use that information. And so um, next I'm going to be adding clove oil. And so this one's a really super volatile oil, so we're gonna use just 0 0.08, but since it doesn't do that smaller fractions, I'm just gonna add, you know, until it gets to 0.9. There we go. And so if you've ever put um, cloves inside of an orange, like at the holidays, it smells really, really good, and so this is what that smells like. So it's gonna be time now to add the essential oils to the soap itself and it looks like it got a little bit thick just by sitting. I probably should have um, measured out the oils earlier but that's not what I did. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that we've got the right temperature again. And it looks like we were a bit low at 117.6 and you can see how the soap is already uh, becoming thick. And so this is not a great sign. Um, what you can do is put it back in the microwave for 10, 15 seconds or something, but um, I chose not to. I'm just gonna go ahead and add the essential oils in. It's a little bit um, 
harder with the soap being a little more thick. The oil wants to sit on the top, but I'll just use a little elbow grease and get it all in there. Hopefully I won't spill too much out of the container. <laughs> but um, it is much easier to get it mixed in when the uh, soap mixture is thinner or warmer. And that's why I was saying before between 120 and 130 is better because, um, you know, it's, it's just takes a little bit more work to get this all mixed in. It'll work out all right though. So now that that's all mixed in, we're going to go ahead and get it into the, uh, the silicone mold and you can see that it's really gotten really um, really hard as I was mixing that up and that could be because there's sort of a reaction with um, the essential oils you know may have had a reaction with the soap um, so I went ahead and put it back into the microwave just for a few seconds and it doesn't look like it's getting any better, but that's okay. That's okay. We're going to get it into the soap mold and it's going to be just fine. This actually doesn't alarm me at all, though it might alarm some, but because I'm used to making hot process soap, um, the soap mixtures usually come out much, much thicker than doing cold process soap or even um, the melt and pour. But to me, I'm pretty confident about um, about you know just using it like this. It'll it will turn out just fine. And so right now, what I'm doing is I'm kind of pounding it down a bit to get all the bubbles out. And um, with a thicker um, soap base, or I'm sorry, not soap base, but with a, a thicker soap like this, you can kind of pound it down a little more. If it's um, thinner than this, you know you might want to be a little more careful. And so there's kind of a problem when you have a silicone mold that doesn't have a box around it, like a rectangle one like this, is that you can kind of see that it's bowing out, uh, out the sides a little bit. And um, so I'm going to need to put it uh, between two boxes or something like that uh, because I don't, have a, um, I don't have a box for it. For my two pound one, Todd made me a box, but I don't have one for this yet. I'll have to ask him to build me one, but you see how that looks? Yeah. So here's where I set it. I set it inside of our strainer and I just stuck a box next to it so that it would end up having straight sides. And so that's how I decided to fix that. So here I've cut the soap with my corrugated cutter and here's what three of the bars look like. These are each four ounce, and I gave one to my kids, so that's why there's only three. The final cost per really cute chunky bar like this is a dollar eight. So that is like super cheap for a homemade soap. Um, if you're used to buying soap at the store, it's not really gonna compare, but if you wanna use handmade soap, you can make this for a dollar eight per bar. And if you're going to use it for holiday gifts, if you had a couple of bars tied together with a cute ribbon and uh, packaged with a, a wash rag or two, that would be definitely come under $5 for a nice gift. So it's a good consideration. Thanks for watching today. I hope that you liked this video. And if you did, can you please give me a thumbs up and if you have any questions, put them down into the comments and don't forget to check those show notes for the link that tells you how much to use of essential oils if you're going to be uh, fragrancing your soap with that. And um, I guess that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.